Om Namah Shiva students this video is a continuation of the previous video in the previous video we had read till that point when the narrator wanted to return back to the city as he had not been able to find loot kings after several attempts bill had dropped him to the station now we will read the last part of the story to find out what the narrator finally did after going back to the city as i'll read the lines you will also read the lines along with me you will take a pencil in your hand when i'll tell you to mark the important lines you will do the same on the way to the city i worried very little over my failure to find loot kings i was too busy thinking about bill magnuson really i considered returning to new molian to practice law if i had found bill so deep and richly human might i not grow to love fritz and gustav and a hundred other slow spoken simple wise neighbors i pictured an honest and happy life beyond the strict limits of universities and law firms underline i was excited underline I had found a treasure underline I had discovered a new way of life underline On the way to the city the narrator said that he had worried very little over his failure to find loot kings instead he was too busy thinking about bill magnuson the narrator had even considered returning to new molian to practice law He felt a certain kind of attachment to all the villagers including Fritz, Gustav and a hundred others whom he considered simple, soft-spoken and wise neighbors. The narrator even said that he had found Bill to be deep and richly human. The narrator had pictured or imagined a life which was honest, simple and joyous. and which he had never experienced in the boundaries of his universities and the law firms he was so happy that he felt as if he had got some kind of treasure and had found a new way of life but if i did not think much about loot kings the office did i found them all upset next morning the case was coming up in the court and they had to have loot kings i was a shameful useless fool underline that morning my promising legal career almost came to an end before it had begun the narrator said that even though he was not so worried about finding loot kings but his firm was the people working at the firm were very upset on hearing that the narrator was not able to serve the summons to loot kings Next morning they had the hearing of the case and Lut King's presence was necessary. He was insulted as he was called a shameful and useless fool. The narrator felt that that morning his promising legal career almost came to an end before it had begun. The chief almost murdered me. he hinted that i might do well at digging ditches i was ordered back to new molian and with me went a man who had worked with loot kings underline i was rather sorry underline because it would prevent my loafing all over again with bill underline the narrator's chief was very angry with him he treated him so badly that the narrator felt as if he would have murdered him The chief insulted the narrator and told him that he was fit for the job of digging ditches and would have done that job better. The narrator was ordered to go back to New Molian with a man who had worked with Loot Kings. The narrator felt bad not for his failure and for what had happened. The narrator felt bad that he would miss the chance to spend time in an idle way with Bill. When the train arrived at New Molian, Bill was on the station platform near his cart. Strangely enough that old tigress, Lute King's mother was there talking and laughing with Bill, not quarreling at all, underline. From the train steps, I pointed Bill out to my companion and said, 
There's a fine fellow, a real man. I spent the day with him. He helped you hunt for Oliver Lute Kings? Yes, he helped me a lot. He must have. He is Lute Kings himself. When both the narrator and his new partner reached New Mollion Station, the narrator saw that Bill was present on the station platform near his cart. To the narrator's surprise, Lute King's mother was present there too, talking and laughing with Bill, and both of them were not quarreling at all. From the train steps, the narrator pointed Bill out to his companion and told him that he was Bill, a fine fellow and a real human being who had helped the narrator in his search for Lute Kings. But the narrator was surprised to hear what his companion told him. The narrator's companion told him that the man who had helped the narrator to find out Lute Kings was Lute Kings himself. What really hurt me was that when I served the summons, Lute Kings and his mother laughed at me as though I were a bright boy of seven. With loving kindness, they begged me to go with them to a neighbor's house for a cup of coffee. I told them about you and they're anxious to look at you, said Lute Kings joyfully. They are about the only folks in the town that missed seeing you yesterday, underline. The narrator said that he was deeply hurt because both Lute Kings and his mother laughed at him and had made him a laughing stock when he served the summons on Lute Kings. Not only that, they even insulted the narrator by requesting him to join them for a cup of coffee at a neighbor's house because according to Lute Kings, those neighbors were the only people in the village who had not seen him the previous day and all of them were anxious to meet the narrator who was made a fool by Lute Kings. The hat driver thus teaches us two main life lessons. The hat driver thus teaches us two major life lessons. Number one, appearances are often deceptive. And we should not trust anyone blindly without knowing them. Otherwise, we may land up in trouble or also end up getting fooled just like our innocent narrator. Just now, we all read the amusing story, The Hack Driver. In the next video, I'll upload the main points and the textual questions of this story. Till then, thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.